Linked fields can be difficult for new Agileoff users to understand, so let's see how they work and how you can configure them yourself. We'll start with a basic definition. A linked field pulls data from one or more records in the system and displays it within a different record, commonly in a different table. Think of a linked field like looking up data in a filing cabinet. The cabinet holds information about people, and each folder is a different person. If you want to see information about a person, you open the filing cabinet, pull out a folder, and look at it. This is similar to how a linked field works. For instance, consider this linked field in a contract. This one is set up so that clicking the requester's name displays their user record, or their data folder, from the filing cabinet. Linked fields are often a part of a linked field set, where several linked fields pull data from the same record in a different table. Just like a folder can hold multiple pieces of paper, a linked field set can hold multiple pieces of data. This link set to the contract requester's record holds their name, email, phone number, and manager's name. Because these are all part of the same linked field set, they're all pieces of data from the same record. So changing which record, which folder, the link is looking at will change all of these pieces of information. Now that the requester's name has changed, you can see that the other information has changed as well. Let's look at this from the administrator's perspective. Here's the list of fields in the contracts table. Notice the fields grouped together. That's a linked field set. This set looks at a particular record in the people table and pulls these fields values from that one record. Let's edit this linked field set and go to the fields tab. Here you see the fields or pieces of data that are included in this linked field set. These are all the different things we were looking at in that record when we opened it. Let's add a new field region to the link set. Notice that after we add a field to the link set, we can rename it. Let's call it requester region. We are referencing a generic piece of information, the region in question, and relabeling it for the purpose we need it for, the requester region. This is an important point to remember. The fields included in a link set are usually relabeled from the source fields to indicate their role in the current table. Now, let's talk about options for linked field sets. We'll start by looking at the display options for the individual fields in the linked field set. Notice that we can set the display type for each field in the linked set from the Display tab. The most common display options for linked fields are hyperlinked box with lookup, plain text box with lookup, and the two view only options, hyperlinked view only and plain text view only. The view only options are useful when you want to display information, but don't want users clicking that field to look up information or don't want them changing the field's value. The two source field display options depend on the data type of the source field. A date field will look like a date field, a choice field like a choice field, and so on. The list of values option shows a drop down field of every value in the source table, which we normally use when the source table doesn't have a lot of values, like assigned team. Box only shows just a plain text box, but without any lookup icon. This is useful when the value is pulled in automatically, but you still want to give the user the option to edit the data. Auto attempts to display a list of values, unless there are too many possible options, in which case it displays a box with lookup. If you want to set other display properties like mouse over text or the placement of the field label, you can edit each field to see its available properties. Now let's talk about some other options with link field sets. So far, we've been using a simple example. Go to the filing cabinet, pull out a record, and look at the data in it. But what if after we look at the data, some of it changes? Maybe our user changes companies. Do we want the information in the record to be updated, or do we want to keep the historical data? We can control that with these options on the Mapping tab. You can choose to never update, always update, or only update fields that haven't had their data changed. 
Users can change the data in a link set if you select the Allow Entries Not in Source Table option, which are called loose links. Remember earlier when we mentioned that users can edit the data in a link field set with the Box Only Display option? This is only possible when you also allow entries that aren't in the source table. With this option selected, users can change the data in the current record that's pulled in from the source record. This does not alter the data in the source record. It only determines whether a user can manually change the data after it's been pulled in. In our example, we're pulling in information about the requester for a contract. Without this option selected, we have to use whatever information is currently in the user record. When we select the option, we can change some of the information for this contract only, like entering a temporary phone number. We've now covered a couple of options with our basic link field set. We're still looking at a single record and pulling out multiple pieces of information. The options we select allow us to determine how our users interact with that information and how it's updated. But what if we want to look at information from more than one record, not just one folder from the filing cabinet, but multiple records, multiple folders? For example, Consider this field, where we might select multiple users to email from a contract. This is controlled by the top section here, where we decide whether the imported fields can hold multiple values. When we go to the filing cabinet, do we pull out one record or multiple records? The difference between these two top options has to do with searching and database size, so we aren't going to discuss them here. When we let a linked field set reference multiple records at the same time, the display options also change. For instance, here's our original example of a linked field to multiple records with a single field included. Compare that with a link set linking to multiple records with multiple fields. Notice that the link set with multiple records and multiple fields looks like a table embedded in the record. This is the only display option for that combination because of the amount of data being displayed. Keep in mind that there's another data type called a related table that also looks like an embedded table, so it's not always easy to determine the data type by simply looking at the record. It might be helpful to think of linked fields as active. The user or system specifies which record should be included in the link. Related tables are passive. They show you all the records that have been linked from the other direction. In our contract example, we are linking the contract requester into each contract. If we go to the requester's user record, we can see all the contracts that they've requested, which are displayed for us in the related table. There are actually two other data types that also look like embedded tables, but they don't require a link between records for them to be created, so we're only going to mention them briefly. The two data types are embedded search result and communication search result. They both run a search on a table and show the results in a record. For instance, in the contracts table, we could have an embedded search result showing us the other contracts our user has requested. These contracts are not actually linked to the current contract, but they can be displayed within it. Each table also has a communication search result field, which is typically located on the emails tab. The field shows all emails sent to or from the current record. We've seen that there are a lot of ways to configure link sets and form connections between records. These last few options determine how data actually gets into the link field set and which records can be included. On the Options tab of the Field Wizard at the very top, we can set a default value for the link. Since the link can hold multiple pieces of data, this isn't setting a single field, but rather the entire link set. Underneath this section, we can choose how we want the default value to update. If we're matching to a field from the contract, do we want the link set to change the record it looks at if that matching field changes? Suppose we want to pull in information to the link set from the contract requester's company, which is stored in the company's table. For instance, maybe the user works for XYZ software, and that company has some information in its company record that we want to display in the contract. But what if the requester changes companies? 
Do we want the link in the contract to update and show the new company? That's what these options are for. With the first option, the company in the contract is not updated, even if the user changes companies and the source value is updated. With the second option, however, the default value is reapplied whenever the record is edited. So if the user changes companies and the record is updated, the company will be updated to the user's new company. With the third option, the default value is only reapplied when an edit in the current table updates the field that determines the default value. For example, if a user manually changes the company and the record is saved, the default value is not reapplied. But if a user changes the contract requester, the company is updated to that requester's company. The last option we'll mention is toward the bottom. This controls which records can be included from the lookup icon for this link set. In brief, this allows you to limit which records can be used as source records by applying a search filter. For instance, if your link set includes customers, maybe you want to limit the possible records to active customers only. That wraps up our introduction to linked fields, but let's quickly review the main points. A linked field pulls data from one or more records in the system and lets you display it in a different record, which is commonly located in a different table. It's like looking something up in a filing cabinet, pulling out one or more folders, and looking at the information in them. You can set whether you want to allow users to look at multiple records and whether they can edit information in a linked field without affecting the source record. You can also determine how data is updated if the source data changes, how the default value in a linked field is set, which records are available for users to reference in a linked field, and how linked fields are displayed within a record.